Order, if everyone could please uh, take your places. Tonight is Monday, July 15th, 2013. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Elmhurst City Council. Uh, I would ask that you all rise and join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Spencer, can you please call the roll? Gudenkoff. Here. Deuter. Here. Dunn. Here. Leader. Here. Polumsky. Here. Graham. Here. Hipskin. Here. York. Here. Levin. Here. Healy. Here. Honquist. Here. Kennedy. Here. Moliner. Here. Wagner. Here. 14 present, zero absent. Uh, 14 present, zero absent, we have a quorum. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number three, receipt of written communications from the public. Is there anybody in the audience at this time who has any written communication they'd like to submit? If so, I ask you to approach uh, and uh, give it to Clerk Spencer. If, if that's something you're gonna read and you need, okay, Clerk Spencer, please approach. Oh, very good. Is there anybody else in the audience who has anything they'd like to submit to Clerk Spencer? Any written communications? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number four. It's a public forum. It's an opportunity for members of the audience to speak on any topic that they so desire. We ask that you state your name and address. Um, we ask that you keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, this is not a Q&A session. It's merely an opportunity to uh, voice whatever uh, you'd like to, do, to voice, and uh, we ask that you direct your comments uh, to the chair. Uh, that having been said, Clerk Spencer, has anybody signed up for a public forum this evening? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we'll start with Tom Moore, 153 North Pine Street. Mr. Moore, if you could approach that microphone over there, the one underneath the light. Can you actually, the, the one behind you by Chief Ruth there. Thank you. Yes, I'm a long-term resident of Elmhurst at 153 North Pine Street. Uh, we've lived there since 1972. And my concerns that I wanted to bring up to the council was the proposal to abandon the one side parking on Pine Street and allow parking on the east side. Um, the letter I submitted it has some information on that as well. Our biggest concern is the street's not wide enough. If you have parking on both sides of the street, you wind up with one lane to get to and from your house. Uh, it was our experience last year. We had uh, four, <coughs> pardon me, new homes constructed on our street. So for most of the year, it was inevitable that contractors would park on the wrong side because they weren't aware of what the regulations were. And on many occasions, not only did it limit access to the street, we had to chase down drivers and had to have them move their car because we couldn't back out of our driveway into the space that was left between the cars parked on both sides. Uh, I've been told, according to this proposal uh, letter, that there were people interested in having these regulations lifted in the area, and I've checked with several neighbors, at least five, and can't find any on Pine Street that think that this would be a good idea. Um, some had brought to my attention that some of the other uh, streets may have no, um, uh, have restrictions on both sides of the street, and maybe this is just one major communication problem, but in our case, uh, I can't find anyone on Pine Street that thinks this would be a good idea to trade the convenience of being able to park on the east or west for the colossal inconvenience of not being able to drive down the street when cars are parked on both sides of the street. The other issue is, uh, it's hard to imagine on a day like today, but we actually get snow on the street, and in the winter time, uh, in all the time we've been there, I have no complaints about the city's ability to keep our street clear of snow and uh, for us to get in and out of our house. <coughs> and the, uh, and I would attribute that to the fact that the east side of the street's always been clear day and night for the plows to be able to push snow against the curb. Um, the last item, uh, I'll try to keep this brief, is the proposal stated that if you 
uh, do not respond to the survey, your vote will be counted as a vote agreeing with the proposed parking changes. And in one instance, the neighbor to my south, the Devers, did not get the survey. So they were unaware that this was even needed to be sent in. And we have one or two houses that are up for sale where I expect you're going to get yes votes from those houses as well. So I would plead with the council that as far as Pine Street is concerned, if you only count the votes that are mailed in, I'm very confident that if you do that, the people on our street will not want to see those regulations uh, lifted. And that's basically my concerns. Thank you. Charlie Geiger, 265 Claremont. Hello, my name is Charlie Geiger from 265 West Claremont Street. As said before, I do not know why this town finds it fair to the taxpayers to spend money on the most expensive and new vehicles in the market. I've said my reasons before and I will spare you the details. I have, I have two more items that I would like to bring up. Uh, recently, um, last two weeks ago at the public forum, an Elmhurst citizen that lives across from the Elmhurst Park relayed her and a couple of other concerns, of others' concerns about the three basketball hoops in their neighborhood. I quote, these basketball hoops are kind of a problem. They're bringing kids in from other areas to use the basketball hoops, and it's kind of getting icky over there, end quote. Furthermore, I quote from her, they loiter after hours in cars during the day they loiter, and they don't even play basketball, end quote. These citizens, I quote, feel uncomfortable going to parks at certain times of the day because these people from out of the area are coming to play ball and they are not really respecting that Elmhurst is a nice area, end quote. Um, lastly, I quote, they are so loud with profanities in the middle of the day and those basketball courts are a big reason why they are coming here, end quote. A solution that this citizen offered was to have police present and speed bumps to deter, I quote, these people, unquote, from coming to the park. A second solution offered would be to replace, replace the basketball courts with tennis courts. Hearing this cry for help reminded me of several occasions in which I too ha have also been frightened. Times during the fall and spring, groups of people will travel in packs on my block. Since particular groups frequently travel with the same individuals, I could only rightly assume that they are in a gang. Members in these gangs loudly use fleeting expletives in their everyday conversation. They also tend to loiter and litter on, around my block. Most of the times, these gang members wear backpacks, and this makes me very concerned. They might even have books, but do we really know? Sometimes, they even park on the wrong side of the street. They also speed down my street to the point where you think they would be late for class. When I see these gangs, I am afraid to leave my, my house in fear for my family's health and safety. I think my block deserves to have police present in speed bumps. I do not know what it is that brings these Elmhurst citizens from other areas of Elmhurst to my area of Elmhurst. I mean, our area of Elmhurst. Overall, we should be cautious before we scrutinize young citizens who are just living life. Thank you. Claude Pagosh, 566 West Gladys. Claude Pagosh, 566 West Gladys. On agenda night is the proposal to renew a contract with Addison LLC. I firmly believe there are two aldermen that sit up there that have no right to vote on this. One was just appointed, the other one was just elected. Personally, having been at the planning and zoning and having LLC represent me was a failure beyond belief. How this city ever got tied up with this organization, I have no idea. They could not present a legitimate plan. Every question asked was, we'll work it out with the city. The city would have to have an engineering department far beyond its capacity right now. 
to renew this contract would be a failure to the Alderman, totally. You may not have reviewed the Planning and Zoning Commission's reports or even listened to their tapes, but if you've even come in partial contact with them, they frankly state that whoever thought of this, Jim, was a fool. And L uh, Edison LLC didn't help your cause. Not in any way. Now, I'll go along with Mr. Levin. You guys have spent a lot of money. But I'll also go along with the Planning and Zoning Board. There was no thought given to it. And continually adding to the problem. They're willing to go along with an idea of a parking garage, but not with these guys. These guys are going to cost you a ton of money. Basically, they're going to cost me a ton of money. So for the two aldermen, they were just put on board. You have no idea what you're going to have to vote on. And to be forced to vote because you have no other choice is ridiculous. And for the rest of the aldermen, if you can go along with these guys, Addison LLC, you better spend a lot more time with your enemies because these guys are not your friends. Todd Benson, 391 River Glen. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Alderman, city staff, and fellow neighbors here in Elmhurst. Tonight I'm here to invite you and promote our farmers market, the Elmhurst Farmers Market, uh, each Wednesday morning through the end of October. The market is located on Vallette, just east of York, and it's a vibrant market with 30 vendors, mainly local farmers from Michigan, Wisconsin, and Illinois, bringing their produce and uh, displaying it, welcoming you. We have had a great uh, number of years and in order to keep anything going, it's important to continue to promote. Part of promoting is also to invite, invite all of our members, our city uh, residents, our leaders to come down to the market. So if you're available this Wednesday morning, market opens at 7 a.m. I'm sure there'll be some local asparagus, some artichokes, some beans, tomatoes cheeses, breads, it's all, it's a great local market. I hope you'll come on down and visit. Something else that I see growing and I don't think it'll be uh, leaving us is the internet and the use of communications. That's what the word internet to me means is communications. The proliferation of social media continues to help glue the parts together. And I want to applaud the city for investing and making sure we have a vibrant way to share our events, be it the city's Facebook page, the various businesses in town, or the uh, congregate site of Explore Elmhurst. I would hope that each of you, if you are on Facebook or Twitter, subscribe to the feeds from Explore Elmhurst, and I hope those watching tonight and those in our audience here are also part of that mix. It helps, it helps to promote events, and it helps to keep Elmhurst connected. Thank you very much and good evening. The last person that signed in tonight is Kathleen Sullivan, 133 Pine Street. Kathleen Sullivan, 133 Pine Street. First, thank you, Tom, for coming forward with the information about Pine Street. I completely agree with you that the parking on both sides um, would be a detriment. We had a lot of parking on both sides. Also, during the flooding events in April, and I was actually trapped on our street for about 10 to 15 minutes when also the extra garbage pickup that you guys graciously provided to us um, was coming through and we couldn't back out and there were cars on both sides and things like that. It's, I think, a little bit too narrow of a street to work with two-sided parking. Um, and so I'm also not in support of it. I was especially uh, disappointed to see that the letter required that everyone return it, given 
given that for uh, the sewer, the, the sidewalk issues that I get to hear about a lot in the Public Works Committee, um, it's, a, a sur it's a survey that counts only the votes that actually come through and it counts you as a no vote. And in this case, we're counted as a yes vote if we don't return it. And that just seems wrong and inconsistent with the city's other policies. So I'd like you to take a look at that. Um, that wasn't really why I came to talk today. One of the reasons I came to talk was uh, we lost another neighbor today, um, leaving to due to the flooding. Um, so um, I'm sad about that. Um, I'm also um, hoping that um, you look very carefully tonight at the minority report on the agenda with regard to fines on marketing rather than what the majority picked. Uh, the reason is, is that fines on marketing, I've been mentioning since I've been talking about the April flooding event, not the one three years ago. By the way, our anniversary is next Thursday, a week from Thursday, is three years since the first big flooding event. Wanted to make sure we got that in today. And um, anyway, so uh, Finds All Marketing is the one who posted the group on at 10 o'clock in the morning on the day of the flood is the flood water had not yet peaked on my street. I find that offensive at all levels. They're very poor at social marketing. I don't think that you need to use them for that. Uh, social marketing might be a good idea, but at $85 an hour, that just seems like they're not the right people for the job. Additionally, I think that uh, that would you could get five high school students for $85 an hour and get a lot better effort and quality for your social marketing. So I think you really need to look at the minority version of the report and and start looking at other options because there's got to be something to save money and as Norm Leader was saying a few weeks ago I mean you're going to need a lot of money to fix flooding issues and mitigate them and so uh, this is one place to save costs and I think you need to start tonight and do something toward that for us so um, anyway and I think that you need to also look at focusing and grouping all your eggs into you know you've got them in a lot of uh, ways. First you have Explore Elmhurst, but then you have Got It, and they don't really tie together. And so I think you really need to look at how you do that, and you're not doing that with this contract, so you really need to. Thanks. Got it? <laughs> that concludes public forum as far as who signed in tonight. Uh, thank, thank you, Kirk Spencer. Spencer. Uh, I think we have another I person. was okay. going to ask, is there anybody in the audience who did not have an opportunity to sign up who would like to speak? Ms. Brenner, you know the drill. Please. Thanks for recognizing me, Mayor. Uh, Tamara Brenner, 137 North Carolina. A couple of things I'm deciding at the last minute to talk about on tonight's agenda. Uh, the fourth letter agreement between the city of Elmhurst and Addison. I'm opposed to the whole, the whole way the contract is arranged and one thing about it is that nobody knows of any way to not be renewing these contracts, which speaks to the way the contract was written in the first place back in 2009. It's written in such a way that everybody's hands are tied to do a project that might not be a great project to do, and that's a problem that the contract is so written. Also, I'm very confused about whose project it is. Now, I'm told that it's our project, the city's project. If it was our project, the city's project, why did the city not present the project in front of the Zoning Commission? Then it was the developer's project. So if that could be clarified as to whose project it is, that would be really interesting to know. The third thing is, I'm also confused about the notice of this item today because I am understanding from the last meeting that uh, this, rep this report was pulled and is now being revisited and the rules were gonna need to be suspended in order to pass both the uh, report and the resolution the same night, yet they're both on the consent agenda, which if it were to pass, wouldn't require suspension of the rules. So I'm just curious about how that's working procedurally. Secondly, the, the uh, fines all renewal contract, I was glad to see that there is a minority and a majority report. I still question the effectiveness of that uh, company. There's no metric to measure um, whether what they're doing is useful or not. Um, I do think you guys need some sort of comprehensive marketing strategy, and I hope regardless of which of these two items you approve, that the comprehensive strategy for marketing takes front and center and doesn't get dropped by the wayside until, the, until we're sitting right upon the, last, the next renewal date. Also, is it going to be in perpetuity that we have this sort of consultant at $85 an hour, or maybe more as time goes on, or is there an end point to having these sort of consultants once things are up and running? Last thing is, I love the farmer's market. I'll be there on Wednesday. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who do not have an opportunity to sign up? Uh, yes, Miss, if you would uh, approach the microphone and uh, please state your name and address.
Hi, my name is Claire Caniff. I live at 280 Columbia Avenue in Elmhurst, and I've been a resident of Elmhurst my whole life. Uh, there are just two things I, I just wanted to address today. Um, the first one is also in reference to last meeting when there was a woman who lived across from the basketball courts who had a problem with people that aren't from Elmhurst coming to use the basketball courts. And I guess just living in Elmhurst, I feel like there have been, you know, problems with creating a very inclusive, cohesive community um, in many ways. And I think that language like that and, you know, I think that it's great that we have basketball courts and I think that we should have more of them. I think it's great that kids go out and do things with each other and are more physically active. And actually we have a lot of tennis courts that I think could even be used perhaps as basketball courts in Elmhurst. Um, also, I don't know what it means to assume someone isn't from Elmhurst from just looking at them, which is an interesting kind of point. But also, I wanted to talk about the fines all um, contract. I actually went to the meeting last week, and I was a little bit shocked at the lack of professionalism in which um, the fines all people conducted themselves in the meeting. Um, I think that if someone isn't able to take criticism or not even criticism, more of like a constructive kind of critique or talking about creative ways to address issues. I think that that's something that should definitely be considered when renewing someone's contract is if we're relying on them to be the first face people see of Elmhurst, we'd like it to be a nice, friendly, professional face. And I think that that's important to consider. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who did not have an opportunity to sign up for our public forum this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on uh, to the next item on our agenda, which is announcements. Uh, are there any announcements? <coughs> Alderman York. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, one final announcement on the Elmhurst Cycling Classic. Um, the website is www.elmhurstcyclingclassic.com. On this Coming Friday, July 19th from 10.50 a.m. until 8 p.m. around Elmhurst College. Um, we'll be utilizing Elm Park, Gray Street, Alexander, and Prospect with the start finish line being at the Wilder Mansion. This is a free event um, for um, residents of Elmhurst and residents who also don't live in Elmhurst. Um, there's a VIP experience at Wilder Mansion and tickets are available online. Net proceeds of this event will be donated to local charities, local nonprofits, and used for local bicycle uh, initiatives. Um, there will be road closures on Friday, beginning around 8 a.m. in the morning, and ask everybody to please see the electronic message boards that are located in the Elmhurst College Alexander parking lot and at the corner of Prospect and Park for details. Um, closures are also on the city website and a notify me message will be sent to residents that are registered for that service. Elmhurst residents that are planning on attending the uh, Cycling Classic are encouraged to commute by bicycle and there will be a free bike valet located just north of the Wilder Mansion sponsored by the Elmhurst Bike Task Force and the Elmhurst Park District. If you're not able to ride to the event, parking will be available in the Adelaide, in the First Street parking decks, and in the daily fee spots along the railway. Parking in the Elmhurst College parking lots is restricted to race participants only. The race day begins at 10.50 and culminates in the women's pro race at 4.40 p.m. There's a family fun ride, which is gonna be a great event at 5.50 p.m. And the men's pro race begins at 6.30 and ends at 8 p.m. with a sprint of prospect to Wilder Mansion. Um, free pre-registration for the family fun ride is available until Thursday uh, evening at the PNC branch on York at Villette. Registration at the day, uh, on the day of the race will be $5 per participant, and that money will be donated to charity. We are expecting an excess of 500 racers during the day, including the Soviet and German national teams in the men's professional race. It is likely that we'll have a few thousand spectators throughout the day in the area, uh, hopefully going downtown and getting lunches and dinners. Um, the largest concentration being around the pro races in the uh, late afternoon and early evening. Uh, local sponsor Elmhurst Masters Competition Cycling would like to thank the College View neighborhood, Elmhurst College, Elmhurst Park District, the City of Elmhurst and Public Safety, um, the Elmhurst Chamber, the Elmhurst City Center, and the many wonderful sponsors and race day volunteers without whom we would not be able to stage this event. 
please come out and enjoy it with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman York. Any other announcements? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, is there anything on the consent agenda before we move, vote on it? Anything on the consent agenda? Anybody who would like to pull, further discuss, vote no. Alderman Levin. Uh, item 6.5 and item 6.17. 6.5. Six point one seven. Any other uh, Alderman Bram? Item six point six. Item six point six. Any other items uh, <clears throat> that uh, anybody wants to pull from the consent agenda? Um, okay, seeing none, I will ask for a motion to accept the consent agenda minus item 6.5, 6.6, and 6.7. 6.17. Alderman Deuter with a motion, Alderman Healy with a second. Um, 6.5, 6. Patty, I'm sorry. Clerk Spencer. Okay. I'm sorry. I heard the wrong item. I don't. I'm sorry, now I'm ready. 6.5, 6.6, 6 6.17. Okay. And we have a motion from Alderman Deuter and a second by Alderman Healy to improve the consent agenda, minus those items. Thank you. Deuter. Aye. Healy. Aye. Hanquist. Aye. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Colander. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkoff. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. Uh, 14 ayes, zero nays. That motion carries. The consent agenda carries minus the noted items on to item number 6.5. I need a motion and a second to, oh, I'm sorry, Clerk Spencer, can okay. you please call the, or uh, read the report? Okay. Therefore, it is the recommendation of the Development Planning and Zoning Committee that the City Council authorize the City Attorney to prepare the proper documents for the approval of the fourth letter agreement between the City of Elmhurst and Addison Corridor Development 1, LLC. Signed by Scott Levin, Chairman, Danny Polensky, Vice Chairman, unsigned by Mark A. Mulliner, Alderman, 7th Ward. I need a motion and a second to put this on the floor. Alderman Levin with a second by Alderman uh, Polensky. Alderman Levin. Thank you. As uh, I'm sure we all recall, this was before the council at our last meeting. There was a certain amount of confusion because the actual uh, fourth letter agreement was not attached. Uh, it was pulled back to committee, but not necessarily, no additional action was taken with the intent that it was, well, maybe it was discussed at committee. It was on the agenda, but no action was taken. Uh, so we're back tonight. The reason I pulled this is uh, we need to suspend the rules uh, to consider both the report and the ordinance on the same night. Um, I had a recollection that we agreed to that last time, but I didn't see it in the minutes. So I would move that we suspend the... Well, I actually... Uh, Alderman Levin, I think we would want to suspend the rules right before we voted on 6.17 versus this report. Very good. All right, on the report, um, I think after all the materials were sent out, I spent a, a good amount of hours over the 4th of July weekend looking at this, the original contract, looking back at the history of this project. Um, there was some discussion before the council at our last meeting about maybe not moving so fast on this project, maybe finding another location, maybe even talking about whether or not we wanted to proceed with this contract. I, I think it's important now that I've reviewed it myself to remind the council that this was a project that the developer brought to us. The developer had properties under contract to do this 
project and came to the city and asked if we wanted to be uh, do it as a joint venture. And as it proceeded along back in 2008, 2009, uh, the city financed the price for the acquisition, which was a good deal for the developer. It was a good deal for us because we had uh, a note from the developer that paid above average interest and was secured by the real properties. And if you look at the original contract, it's proceeding pretty much along the way we all expected it to proceed, which is when the uh, Thorn property was vacated, uh, at that point, the city, who now owns the property, would proceed as it, with its joint development partner and build this parking garage. We shouldn't be confused by the fact that there is a separate proceeding that has been going on whereby there's consideration of whether this parking garage should be four stories or six stories. And that has uh, been the subject of recent Zoning and Planning Commission hearings. It's a, been decided by them. Their report is now before DPZ, which has not yet undertaken uh, consideration of that. So as we s sit here right now, uh, the city has put substantial funds out into this project to meet a critical need for parking. We have a contract with a developer who I would venture to say has invested several hundred thousand dollars in its work on this project. And personally, I regard this Fourth Amendment as somewhat perfunctory. Uh, I don't know that we really have a choice. Uh, the project was delayed on somewhat on our part, somewhat on their part, uh, but we are fairly on schedule, and I don't think that legally we could just walk away and say we're going to keep the property that the developer brought to us to do a joint venture. Um, the Fourth Amendment provides the formality that would be desirable for this kind of project, uh, and I think that uh, there's, in my opinion, there's really no choice but to do it. Um, Again, divorcing it from whatever else might happen down the road, uh, we do have a contract that I think we have to live up to, and this is a, an amendment that is needed, and I recommend that you all support it. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask for, uh, ask for Clerk Spencer to please call the roll. Levin. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Conquest. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. 14 ayes, 0 nays. Uh, 14 I zero nays, that motion passes. On to <coughs> item 6.6. .6. Clerk Spencer, if you could uh, read the recommendation. 6.6. Therefore, it is the recommendation of the Development Planning and Zoning Committee that the City Council authorize City staff to, apply, to ap ap apply for the Zoning and Planning Commission to hold a public hearing on text and max map amendments to the zoning ordinance regarding the creation of a C3A overlay zoning district for properties commonly known as 140 and 160 West Industrial Drive, which would permit certain uses, uses permitted in the I-1 restricted industrial classification in addition to those in C three general commercial classification signed by scott levin chairman danny polinski vice chairman mark a mulliner alderman seventh ward i need a motion to bring this before the council uh, alderman levin with a motion alderman polinski with a second alderman levin thank you uh this was a it stems from a request by uh, the owner of 140 to change the zoning on that property from a C zoning to I industrial. Um, it went before the Planning and Zoning Commission with a recommendation that the application not be approved. 
the property is somewhat unique, and uh, I'll describe it briefly. The uh, Waverton, or the former Waverton Hotel, is on the corner of York and the 290 ramp. The subject property is just to the west of it. Uh, across the street uh, from the Waverton is Mariano's, and across the street from the subject property is I-1 zoned property. Uh, the letter family, grandfather of the applicant, built the property uh, many years ago to house Canon copiers as their headquarters, and at that time it was zoned in a former C-5 district, which included some industrial uses. Uh, it was light industrial and heavy commercial. Uh, the property became vacant in 2010, and uh, that is when the letters realized that in 1992, the property had been rezoned to a C3 general commercial, which means that the property cannot be used for the intent for which it was built with loading docks, et cetera. Uh, the zoning, the DPZ felt that uh, we did not want to override the commission. Uh, we did not want to recommend that it be I. Uh, as I've described it, you'll see that not only is it, it is across the street from an I-1, but the Waverton is a C-zoned property and uh, next door on the west is a C property. So it would be sticking a I zoning right in the sort of a little sandwich of I between C. Uh, but because of this special uh, circumstances and uh, in consideration of what might be developing as this is a new TIF district, the uh, committee felt that it would be appropriate to do an overlay for not the Waverton but the applicant property and the one just to the west so that they would be uh, remaining in the C zoning but it would have an overlay so that some of the uses uh, for out of I would be permitted for these two properties, the subject property and the one to the west. Uh, and to advance that, we've, uh, the report then requests that the Zoning and Planning Commission hold hearings about an overlay district that we believe would be uh, beneficial not only for the property owner but for the, the area in general for those two properties. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I have um, many points to make and many follow-ups if you would indulge me, please. Um, three concerns that I have over this uh, report are the following, and then I'll ask a list of questions for my first concern. Um, the first concern is my perception, at least, of uh, perceived spot zoning. Um, the request that is before us, um, the recommendation is for two properties and two properties alone. Um, I'm not sure exactly um, why it would be applicable for these two properties and that will follow up with my questions to possibly get that answer. Um, for 140 Industrial Drive, I guess what is the current use of the property and that, therefore what is the intended use to move forward um, with this requested overlay? And I have concerns of spot zoning from the standpoint of this is a current application, open application by a petitioner that we as the city, is one of my later points, is now making a proposal for text amendment um, to accommodate the potential future use of, this prop, of these two properties. Other questions are, um, is there a contract on the property at 160 Industrial Drive, which is currently up for sale? Did 160 Industrial Drive, the other property out of the two properties, also request any type of changes or intended uses, um, therefore needing a C3A overlay? And that is it for that first point uh, of concern being perceived spot zoning, and then I would like to follow up on the other two points of concern. Alderman Levin, you want to respond? Well, I don't believe this would be spot zoning. We're trying to deal with a unique situation in a unique area. Um, it wasn't, uh, I think it was the decision of the committee, it wasn't requested by the applicant uh, to meet the needs for the development and use of this property. Um, 140 does not have an intended use right now. It has facilities that would have industrial characteristics such as uh, the loading dock and some warehousing. Um, 
They had a training school, which was the subject of their uh, request to change it into a industrial zone property um, because training schools couldn't be in commercial. That, I'm, um, I believe, there was uh, offered at the committee that that is not a current intended use. Um, so I don't think that there is anyone on, there is no uh, use that's set right now, but as they market the property, that's what they're looking for. Uh, the application is remaining open uh, in case the decision of the committee and subsequently the council would be to deny their request and we didn't do the overlay. They want to preserve their appeal rights for being turned down in the application and we certainly wanted to accommodate that. Uh, 160 is not under contract that we're aware of. Uh, it's being marketed. We're not doing anything with the overlay that would change in any way the use of that property would limit it. In fact, the overlay would expand the potential uses for that property. Um, I do not believe that uh, the owner of 160, which is State Farm, I believe, has joined in the request, uh, but they would certainly be, um, I don't, I'm not sure what their objection would be when it expands uses, but if they had problems with that, uh, they would be able to testify before the Zoning and Planning Commission and let the commission and the committee know what their concerns are. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you, Alderman Levin, Chairman, sir, in regards to those responses. I, I guess the question, at least in my mind, still remains open from that point, being that um, the owner at 160 Industrial Drive has no intent, has not requested any zoning change and would have no reason for it. So I'm not sure why the city of Elmhurst would add a random, what I would call a random property address to a overlay zoning request text amendment. Point number two is exactly that, city being the applicant for um, the text amendment. Um, I'm not sure exactly why the city would be the requester for the text amendment. And I'm not sure if everybody is aware, but if the city moves forward with being the um, applicant for this text amendment, therefore, there would be no testimony by the current applicant um, being um, the letterers today. Um, they would not be testifying per that text amendment because the city would be the one making that request. So I'm not sure why the the city would be the responsible party for making a text amendment. I would think that it would be the applicant who should prove their case that this is a necessity um, from going from their current zoning of C3 to this proposed overlay of, of C3A. Um, I don't know if the uh, chairman or anyone else on the committee would like to respond to that or not, um, but I'll just add the last bullet point of concern for myself. <coughs> And we all on the dais, or most of us on the dais, um, have in the past approved the new TIF for boundaries, which includes not only the Waverton Hotel, but these two properties that are being proposed for this overlay district. And with that, that would make the, the hotel and these two properties be 13 acres of what would be commercial C3 property, 13 acres, the largest some total acreage for potential commercial use off of any arterial um, roadway in the city of Elmhurst. I think that is significant. If we are opening this up to C3A, which would include non-commercial uses, we're kind of almost voting against what we voted for for TIF 4. TIF 4 is to encourage commercial development, encourage sales tax growth. But then we're opening up these two properties that are in the TIF that we all approve those boundaries. We're opening up to, to non-commercial uses. It doesn't make sense to me. We're, we're going against the grain of what we passed for the new TIF. So I, I'm, I, I think we're talking on both sides if we mo move forward with this. And my last point is this is in my ward. This is in the third ward. So I do have great concerns. I have no issue with the applicant coming forward. I have issue with this request though, um, due to the fact that A, it's the city of Elmhurst being the applicant, and two, we're pretty much voting against what we've already decided that the new TIF should be commercial, and now we're saying, well, commercial and throw in a handful of industrial uses. Um, and then lastly, 
my perception, I'm not saying it's per law, but my perception of possible spot zoning. Thank you much. Any other comments? Alderman Levin. To, to respond to Alderman Bram, um, the city's, the fact that the city is the applicant uh, does not mean that the letter family cannot testify in support or against it, uh, just as any other member of the public could. Um, the fact that it's in a TIF uh, doesn't, we're not taking it away from the commercial uses uh, and unless some move is afoot or is made to acquire properties uh, through the governmental processes, uh, the owner is still letterer and the state farm properties, if they want to uh, participate in some sort of aggregation of the property, uh, they can do so. Uh, it allows them to use, have other uses, but it's still commercially zoned so that if someone came in and acquired those three properties, they can do anything commercial on it. Alderman Polumsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with Alderman Levin and just add one more point that the committee also considered that our comprehensive plan includes uh, the applicant's property and the one next to it in an area called a business park, a business district. So while it's commercially zoned and perhaps an overlay would allow for commercial and other uses, in one way looking at it, it also is um, a, a business area. So that would allow, it, it goes along with what the applicant um, has designed and, and what the possible uses may be on that site. Any other comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, the, the last comment, Alderman Levin's comments are correct. I misspoke when I said that they, did, they wouldn't have the opportunity. They would definitely have the opportunity, but it's not mandated that the current applicant would need to speak during the text amendment. The last thing I would just like to say in re regards to my TIF comments is what we are doing is trying to plan for the best possible TIF development in, in this area. This is about planning. If we open it up to industrial uses, yes, it doesn't mean that the industrial uses will occur or they will occur for any extended period of time. But pl from a planning perspective, the TIF is for the commercial area. And that is what we should be doing here today, as well as moving forward with the other properties in the TIF district. These properties, I believe, should remain as commercial, not giving the opportunity of additional industrial uses. Alderman Gutenkopf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess mostly I have a question for the committee. So as I understand what we're doing tonight, um, the committee's proposing we're creating a new zoning district before we move forward with our overall planning for the TIF. The planning that'll help us identify essentially what's going to go where and what's it going to look like and how that's going to happen. So I, I guess my question is, is about how you understand the timing of these components. This is sort of a uh, if not for this potential applicant, would we even have been having this discussion? And that's, that's where I keep coming back to is, you know, this is, I was on the zoning committee for two years. It's the kind of question that we, we discussed um, in light of spot zoning issues. And one thing that always came to my mind was what, what, are, what prompts this? What's prompting this action for us? Is it the overall planning? which is what we're ultimately responsible for, for the entire district, and how does this fit into our overall plan for the district? Or is it in response to a particular immediate need? And this strikes me as something that's in response to a particular immediate need. And for me, while it's desirable to have these parcels developed, to do so while we're in the baby steps, the very beginning of our overall planning for the entire district, um, it irks me. It, it, it irks me because I, I, I want us to move forward with the entire TIFFS plan to give us a strong sense of how we want to shape the entire corridor. And if we're looking at 
something that feels like spot zoning for a part of that corridor before we have a plan, I feel like we're jumping the gun. And I appreciate that we have an applicant who came to us with a proposal for an industrial use. I think the applicant went through the appropriate process. I appreciate the commission's deliberations about why they might not want to return this to an industrial use. And I feel like the way the report is suggesting we, in we include those industrial uses anyway is just a way of saying, well, commission, we're kind of trying to agree with you by not agreeing with you. And I'm not comfortable with that. I I'd like to see us moving forward with the whole plan. I'd like to see us assessing whether or not rezoning has to happen as part of that plan and not as a response to an immediate request and need. So I'm uncomfortable with this report um, for pretty much all of those reasons and many of the things that Alderman Bram said. And I'm uncomfortable with the fact that it feels like spot zoning. Um, and spot zoning, as we all know, <coughs> is really uh, anathema to overall city planning. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask Clerk Spencer to call the roll. Levin. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Bram. No. Ipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Conquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. No. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Only then if you can't get 10. But I think 12 ayes, two nays. 12 ayes, two nays, that motion carries. Um, on to agenda item 6.17. Before I ask for a motion to put this before us, I'm going to ask for a motion. As uh, the council will recall, two weeks ago when, we, when the report was deferred, it was mentioned at that time uh, that there is a time sensitivity to this. So uh, the report, when it came back two weeks from now, was going to appear on the consent agenda along with the resolution. Um, normally our code calls for a two-week break in between, uh, but due to the time sensitivity, um, we are, I'm going to ask uh, the council for uh, a motion to um, suspend the rules, uh, and then we will ask for a motion to vote. So a motion to suspend by Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Polumsky. We can do this by voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Clerk Spencer, we good? Okay, on to uh, agenda item 6.17. Clerk Spencer, can you please read the resolution? It's resolution uh, to um, approve a fourth letter agreement <coughs> between the city of Elmhurst and Addison Corridor Development Number One LLC. I guess that's mm -hmm. our I one, one. one LLC. I'd like a motion. I need a motion. Alderman Levin and a second to put this before us. Alderman Polumsky. Um, Alderman Levin, any comments? Uh, I don't think there's any additional comment that we have from the committee. It's uh, enacting what we discussed under the report. Any other comments? Seeing none, Clerk Spencer? Levin. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Graham. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays, that motion passes. Uh, on to agenda item number seven, committee reports. Um, item 7.1, the majority report finds all community marketing. Clerk Spencer, if you could uh, yes. it read is the recommendation. It is therefore the recommendation of the Development Planning and Zoning Committee that the City Council authorize the City Attorney to prepare the proper documents for the formal City Council approval of Kathy Maloney and the Finesall Community Marketing 
firm to continue to provide consulting services for the city of Elmhurst for a one-year period. Signed by Scott Levin, Chairman, Mark Mulliners, Alderman, 7th Ward, and unsigned by Danny Polumsky, Vice Chairman. I need a motion to put this on the floor. Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Mulliner. Alderman Levin. Uh, on the main report, uh, uh, the Fines All contract was up. It's actually, I believe, about a month past due. They came in uh, over the last two uh, DPZ meetings and presented us with information on the kinds of efforts that they have been making in terms of their marketing contract. Uh, basically, they have a 500-hour cap, $85 an hour contract. I rather liken it to any other uh, contractual services uh, agreement we have. This one, by way of background, we in, say, 2009 or so eliminated perhaps uh, two and a half positions in our economic development department, including the director, uh, in a cost savings measure, and we contracted out to two or three different individuals to take on parts of these um, economic development activities. Um, and there, uh, I think I would say uh, fairly the, some of the presentation was a little bit wide ranging. It got to be a little confusing because uh, the subject matter went into what was wished to be accomplished as, to, as opposed to what Feinzall is actually doing. In other words, they were proposing some ideas that someone should do, not necessarily them. But all in all, they function as uh, contractual staff and uh, they report I believe to assistant city manager cop who's been very satisfied with their services they respond to requests when someone calls the city for information I attended the uh, real estate uh, seminar they put on for properties that are available um, I won't go through all the things they do but the key to me is that they are serving serving a staff function in a contractual basis and they essentially do what they're told to do in marketing efforts. It's a cost-effective way for us until we decide to go down a different path to uh, take care of economic development. Uh, I think uh, by their own testimony and by Assistant City Manager's cops comments, it's clear that they put in more than the 10 hours a week. It's a reasonable rate, and uh, the committee where the majority report recommends that we extend it for a 12-month contract. I would only add that uh, the contract is terminable, I believe, on 60 days notice for, with or without cause. So if there was a change of uh, circumstances, uh, we are not locked into a contract for a long term. Any other comments? Alderman Polumsky. I'd like to make a motion to substitute the minority report for the majority report. Uh, there is a motion to substitute the minority report with the majority report. I need a second for that. Alderman York with a second. Alderman Polumsky, would you like to discuss your minority report? Yes, thank you. Um, the agenda item before us is a contract renewal for Fines All Community Marketing, and I'd like to emphasize that the contract, our expectations of Fines All, and how they fit within our develop the development goals are the focus. Um, the all three committee members agree that fines all consultants have fulfilled their responsibilities, so that is not the issue. In our committee meeting, I was pleased to learn that fines all has ideas reaching beyond the current scope, including an email marketing campaign and enhanced social media promotion. We did not discuss how those might be incorporated, though they though there would need to be a change somewhere, possibly in the number of hours they log in, but maybe there are other opportunities, opportunities requiring us to rethink our staffing and consulting structure, as well as the focus behind it. With the five-month contract, Finesall can continue providing their existing services while we consider not only if or how to include their new ideas, but our marketing and development efforts on a broader scale. In January of 2013, Alderman York and I submitted a referral seeking to improve our role in development. A few points in the referral include, identify and inventory all resources allocated for economic development, community marketing, and tourism. Included our funding sources for city staff, contracted consultants, and city and community grants. Compare objectives for all promotional efforts and identify any overlap in responsibilities and objectives. 
We recognize that since consultants have in part taken over marketing responsibilities, we've seen openings and closings of businesses throughout town, the shift of hospital employees and visitors from the Bertoga campus to the south end of town, and the newly created North York TIP district anchored by Mariano's. I believe a five-month contract for Feinzall can serve as an evaluation point for our referral at, and a point at which we decide if and how Feinzall's scope of services will change. The end of a five-month contract also is about one year from the date of our referral and additionally the start of the new fiscal year. I recognize a five-month contract is unconventional, but for a, a council that recognizes eight months should be called one year for the sake of improving, planning, and facilitating best practices, I ask that we challenge ourselves to agree to a five-month contract, and I ask for your support. Thank you. Uh, other comments? Alderman York. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, and most important, as Alderman Plumsky alluded to, this isn't about fines all and need not reflect on them. Um, I did speak at length with Kathy Maloney last Friday, and we, we do share many of the same concerns with regard to marketing um, of the city to residents, to shoppers, both residents and non-resident shoppers, and to potential businesses. Um, second, I think Alderman Plumsky has addressed most everything in her comments, but I'd like to add just a bit of additional color. Um, I, like uh, many of us up here, and, and Alderman Levin uh, referred to it also, uh, was around in the dark days of 2009 and 2010 when we had to make some uh, difficult um, budget decisions that led to a reduction in the economic development staff, and the shift was made to a consultant-driven uh, marketing and development, development effort. I believe for the most part this has served the city well to maintain what we have, which is a very critical element of our ongoing economic success, and something we've done pretty well, uh, and to also add what we can with regard to new businesses and redevelopment. Even though we are only three to four years removed from the dark days, I, I truly believe things have changed in the marketing world in the way that the city needs to be marketing itself to attract uh, clientele and new businesses. That is why I collaborated with Alderman Plumsky on our referral. And it is also why I believe that by extending this contract until the end of this short year tonight should provide the impetus for city staff to have time to look at suggestions we have made in regard to the utili utilization of some new resources, like Elmhurst College, for example, for city staff to not only listen to our consultants on some specific marketing initiatives that have been suggested, but to obtain further information uh, regarding the implementation and cost of those initiatives and bring that to committee with a plan to reallocate resources where feasible and are practical, and perhaps a funding plan for additional resources to assure that the city of Elmhurst remains an easy choice for shoppers to flock to and for new businesses to locate in and attract even more new droves of shoppers. I believe that some periodic change in downtown is a good thing as it does bring back people to try the new venues. So I ask for your support of the report favoring the five month extension, not because we're imposing, imposing a five month deadline for fines all, but because we want there to be a comprehensive look at the overall plan as suggested by our referral, and based upon that look-see, we decide if and how finds all scope of services might change. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Gutenkoff. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I concur with, uh, with Alderman Polemski's minority report, and primarily because I'm not worried about the length of the contract, but I do think it should coincide with our fiscal year, and I think this five-month renewal accomplishes that. Um, I think that when I review the list of all the tasks that Feinzall is expected to provide, all I can think about is how wide-ranging and disparate these tasks really are. That when we as a city eliminated specific staff positions related to economic development, yet we still assumed overall responsibility for that development, we tried to substitute a contractor's work for centralized control. In the ensuing years, we seem to have piled more tasks onto these, con onto these contractors, and in the end, we got a laundry list of tasks. We need to take responsibility for developing a plan and focusing our consultants' work. If we as a city believe that economic development is a priority, we should prove it 
by devoting the appropriate resources to that development. I think five months should give city staff enough time to assess the tasks that they're asking Feinsall to perform and to define the scope appropriately. It should be enough time for us to evaluate all our consultant contracts, as per Alderman York and Polemsky's other referral, and to ensure centralized control and reduce wasteful consultant overlap. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Bram. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> um. <coughs> okay. In regards to the minority report, um, I think uh, I, I disagree with some of the points made, and, and those points I'm referring to is in regards to this is not in re this is not pertaining to Feinzall's performance. The actual report says Feinzall Community Marketing Contract Renewal, which you would base that renewal on one's performance. So I think if any of us neglect the fact that it's not based on performance, I think we're kidding ourselves up here. It is definitely based on performance. Um, I, I was enlightened because we didn't have a committee meeting last Monday night and I was able to sit in on the DPNZ committee meeting. Um, during that discussion, there were a lot of points made. Um, the goals were listed out from Feinzall and some of which I had the opportunity to question because I did not feel that they were being met. With that said, I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know if that's part of Feinzall's issues part of the city of Elmhurst issues or a combination of both. Um, I am, uh, I guess, a little short on patience due to the fact that we've been trying to quantify the performance of this company for uh, many a years now. Uh, and uh, it seems like we are having, continue to have a difficult time doing so. With all that said, I do support the minority report from a standpoint of compromise. I think five more months ending the fiscal year would be the appropriate thing to do. I think that we do need to get emphasis from Alderman York and Alderman Polumsky's referral. And that way, if there is any confusion on either part from Feinzall as one of our consultants or any of the other consultants we're supposed to have um, helping us with economic development, marketing, et cetera, um, that will be clear and we could move forward appropriately, either with Feinzall as one of those consultants or without, that will be determined by um, the end of this fiscal year, in my view. So I appreciate the, the motion to um, extend the contract for five months. I will go along with that as a compromise, um, but I think that both sides of the coin here needs to sharpen their pencil and make sure we have a good plan, good goals, on what not only this consultant should be doing, but all consultants when it comes to sales, marketing, and economic development in the city of Elmhurst. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Muller. Originally, if you were in the meeting, I, I was supporting the concept of the five months, but as I, I worked my way through this a little bit, one of the things that uh, did come to light, which was a very important piece, was the fact that we can cancel this contract at uh, a moment's notice. One of the things that's really important for us to realize is that we do need to review, as the report's been put in, our marketing strategy as it relates to the city of Elmhurst. And I know that staff is in the process right now of working with the college to set up a program where they're going to have a team come in and evaluate that process and how we're doing our marketing, which will include everything. That report, because of the timing of it and because of the way the semesters work, won't really be ready for us until the time frame of around February. And if we do a five-month contract, then we're going to be back renegotiating re this contract again in five months if we go ahead and move forward with the idea of Elmhurst College assisting us. Um, so I would prefer for us to go ahead with the year contract and if we need to cut it off at an earlier date because it's determined that we have a better marketing plan, I'd like to do that rather than say we go with a five month and then come back and renegotiate this. Alderman Levin. I think that uh, a five month contract is, could be characterized as more than unusual in the business world. Um, we've been doing year contracts with every other vendor. That doesn't mean we can't do one. Uh, there's certainly 
not a need that I foresee for DPZ to review this contract again in five months. We just spent a couple hours on it. Um, and I don't see the relevance of the end of the fiscal year. Is someone going to be making a motion to move every contract so that it ends on December 31st? Uh, like state license plates, our contracts are spread throughout the year so that we can look at the contracts as they come due. There's no, I, 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 would, I really don't know how many of our contracts have been tied to the end of our fiscal year. If, if they have ended on that date, I would guess it's mere coincidence. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to resolve the coordination of marketing and how uh, the York Palumski referral uh, in the next five months. There was talk about the college and what that would take. And if it did go to the college and they gave us some ideas and it came back at the end of the semester and went to our committee and we looked at it and we talked about it and sent it to the council, we're beyond five months. And that's if the, co that's if the college agrees to do it and we don't uh, agree to have somebody else do it. So it's been said it's not about fines all, but we are making it about fines all. Uh, it seems to me that uh, there's some feeling that the city needs to make some efforts to go ahead and look at what we're doing for our marketing dollars. So why are we trying to pin this on fines all? And this is only on the amendment of six months or 12 months, because it's not about fines all. As Alderman Mulliner said, we can cancel this on short notice. So uh, if the council wants to take the initiative and move it forward, that's fine, but don't make it because we have to go, go back and look at the, uh, the uh, fines all contract again. If there's someone who needs to take the responsibility, fines all is the one that didn't do a marketing coordination study. The city didn't do it. And so I think instead of wasting time going back to visit this again, let's find ways beyond this one topic to see where we go with marketing, but it's not tied to a five-month contract period. Well, I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I agree with a lot of a lot of the issues raised by uh, Alderman Levin and Alder, Alder, Alderman Mulliner. Um, I'm looking at the uh, referral by uh, Alderman York and Polomsky, and uh, I, I think there's going to be a, uh, um, some strong findings that will help the city to develop a, a, a more concrete uh, strategy on marketing. Um, but I, I don't see that coming uh, any time in the next few months. If we would sign a five-month extension, we're really, if to be judicious, we would need to start working on that two, three months from now uh, on, on the next step or, or another extension to that. Uh, I, I don't. I think a year is really the minimum in any uh, business uh, agreement that you have. And uh, I get the opportunity to re review and write and sign a lot of those in, in uh, uh, my line of work. And uh, one year is really, uh, it, it goes, by, goes by pretty quick. Um, also, the, the fiscal year issue, um, certainly we wouldn't want to have everything ending at the uh, end of this calendar fiscal year. Uh, because the administration of trying to um, to uh, evaluate and coordinate all those agreements simultaneously would, would not be um, a fun task or uh, promote any type of effective um, evaluation of them. Um, so I, I think one year is more appropriate. Um, the, uh, the other efforts are go going to go ahead uh, and, and provides a lot of benefit to the city. There's a lot of other levers in our marketing efforts that uh, can, we can utilize. It's, it's not just this particular consultant agreement. Um, so I, th I would contend that uh, a year is more appropriate at this juncture. Um, thanks. Alderman Healy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to preface my comments, too, by saying that uh, my position has nothing to do with the performance of fines all. Um, by all accounts, at least from staff accounts and, and a couple of the aldermen I've talked to, that the, the performance is, is there. So um, I am supporting the minority report. It has nothing to do with, with fines all per se. Um, a couple comments um, in regards to what's been said. 
Alderman Mullen or Alderman Levin said that we can cancel the contract, I believe, with 60 days notice. Um, I'm not comfortable that we would do that. Um, even if we made the decision at some point to consolidate, to change marketing efforts, um, that we would cancel a contract. It hasn't happened in my four plus years. I don't know that it's happened on the council since I've been paying attention. So I'm not so comfortable just saying we're going to cancel the contract. And I would suggest um, what what would be different in the what would look different to the to the rest of the um, profession is a five month contract or somebody getting a cancel a contract canceled on them. So I I, I don't think that's a realistic. Um, opportunity to say that we would cancel the contract. Next question I would have is, so we're talking about a referral that was made in January of 2013. Um, I heard the, the, the college isn't going to be ready till February 2014. Um, heard some comments about not being ready to move. I, I guess I question what have we done to this point on that referral and, mm -hmm. and why aren't we further along um, with that referral because I think the referral is a good one. Um, I think to ha have a better understanding of our marketing capabilities, who's helping us with what, uh, I think that's a good thing. Um, and honestly, I think I'd like to see communication added in there. It's not just marketing per se, it's communication. You know, several comments tonight made about social media. Well, that goes to beyond just marketing of Elmhurst. We can talk about a lot of different things with social media that I think we as a city haven't done yet. Uh, we're doing some good things, but I think we can doing we could be doing more good things um, regarding communication in general that I think we can uh, uh, look at as a staff and as a council as part of Alderman Polemski and Alderman um, York's referral. Lastly, regarding the fiscal year, um, Alderman Levin is correct. We, we have not uh, done this um, much tying contracts to fiscal year because we just started the fiscal year policy. Uh, this is our first time playing with it. This is the first time managing it. And I, I will tell you that I will support any contract that's on an annual basis to be a January through December contract. I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense for a lot of reasons. Budgeting, um, fund allocation, et cetera. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Now, that's not to say that every contract we have out there should be January through December. I th the Burke contract comes right to mind. That doesn't necessarily need to be an annual contract. That is a task-specific contract that I don't think matters much on the time. It's more the project. But where we have annual type contracts, I think we want them to coincide with our fiscal year. At least I, I would. I think that makes a lot of sense. So uh, I certainly under understand the concerns. But to me, this is a, a fairly easy decision. Um, and, and any contract that comes up, I will be personally looking to see, can we make it January through December? So for all of those reasons, uh, I will support the minority report. Thank you. Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I've heard concerns from both residents and business owners in the downtown area that the area could really use more variety, and I think it could use a boost now. Um, I support the calls for looking at the way the city does its marketing, and also, you know, I would encourage the city to look at the way it handles its economic development ov overall. Alderman Levin talked about the shift to consultants um, as a cost-saving move, and um, I, I think an evaluation of that and figure out did we has that been more efficient and cost effective um, so I'd encourage the city to be looking at those things and folks have mentioned the look um, that Elmhurst College is doing which I think is great to get the college involved in some of the city business um, but I don't think we need to wait to see what they what comes back I think if they give us some information that's useful that would be terrific um, but I, I don't think that we should in any way wait for them and put our plans on hold to see if what they bring back is something that can be useful to us or not. So I um, support the minority report because I think the time to look at these things is now and I think uh, this will make sure it gets done as soon as possible. Any other comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two remaining comments here. Uh, one in regards to uh, Alderman Levin's comments uh, of uh, Debating this being a, a waste of time from five months compared to a year, um, I don't agree with that. I think that this is long overdue. The contract expired in April. April has some significance, if we remember when our fiscal year was compared to now. Um, so there was some, some definite significance of having the contract expire in April previously. Um, the only other statement I want to make is that I don't see a representative here tonight from Finesall. 
This is an important discussion, and I'm disappointed not to see that here tonight. I think, you know, if there was any concern of five years, a year, or not at all, that there would be a representative here tonight, um, maybe to speak in public comment, maybe not, but at least understanding the discussion and the concerns that the 14 elected bodies that are about to place a vote have in regards to moving forward with this. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. I, just one additional comment came to mind as we were talking about this. Um, I can appreciate that this is not a less than 12 year contract would not be typical in the business world. Um, but I do think, and we've heard this tonight, the way that we're using these consultants are different than the way that you might typically use consultants. Um, so to the extent that they are operating more as staff or as a staff consultant, I think a more regular review of those contracts is not um, out of line necessarily. Very good. Any other comments? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask Clerk Spencer to please uh, call the roll. Let's be clear here. We are talking about uh, the motion to substitute the minority for the majority. The motion to substitute the minority <coughs> for the majority. Clerk Spencer. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. No. Healy. Aye. Heimquist. No. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. No. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. No. Leader. No. Okay, did I get everybody? Uh, Bram. Did I forget Bram? You did forget yeah. me. I think you need um, work. Aye. No, I got Bram and Hipskin. Hipskin. Bram and then Hipskin. Right. Bram. Aye. You're an I? Okay. Correct. Hipskin. No. Okay. Looks like eight eyes and six nays. Eight eyes, six nays. So the minority report officially replaces the majority report. Um, we need a motion to pass the majority. We do. Okay. So now, based on that, based on the substitution. There's already a motion. Point of order. Could the motion was to substitute. Now we have to actually vote to make it to accept the report. But I thought of it. Eight, no. six. It passed. passed. The minority report passed. So let's vote on the minority report. So now we so, have to vote. So that having been said, it has now been substituted. I need a motion and a second to approve, uh, to, to you yes. Might have a, you might have already had it. You do? It was just to substitute it. I haven't heard a motion to. Yes. If I may, Mayor, I, uh, I made a motion to pass the report and was seconded, and there was a motion to substitute, not to do something else. So it, the motion to pass is there, except now the minority report has substituted. So I think now we are on the minority report. Correct. Correct. So we actually, the motion. So the minority report is now before us because it is substituted. Right, it's before us. Do we need to vote? Yes. We need to okay. Yes. That, it, or any more debate would be on the minority. Well, I guess not. Wait, I'm yes. confused now. So who do I call? <laughs> on the floor. I, I still think that's wrong. Oh, you two. One okay. second. The majority. <laughs> but I have to go back and vote on the majority no, report, the which majority has report. become. This has yeah. become it. Right. So it's a, it'll be reversed it's now, these right. votes, because right? Which has been done. But it's I don't know. Right, but I'm, I'm saying well, if I do it this way, then these go over here and these go over here. Some people may vote for them. I think we can. That was the report. It is the report. Okay. Right. Just oh, even the they vote mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. but they'll vote no, for the twelve. There is no more to report. Oh, no, this is the vote. Okay. They might. Yeah. They might. What are we voting for? It doesn't become the majority of the war against because that's the committee. These did. did substitute. Right. No, it doesn't. So, no, it doesn't. We really I don't believe that's the report that's itself. For the report itself. Yeah. Which and, okay. I mean, which is my business. The the discussion is um, yeah. obviously Alderman Plumsky's. Uh, 
minority report has passed eight to six, uh -huh. and it has now become uh, the majority report. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Alderman Levin had earlier made a motion to, to pass the majority report, which is now I, Alderman well, Lumsky's report. Exactly. Right. Your, your contention is that it becomes the majority report because the council has made it the majority report? Because the committee has not made it the majority report. That's correct. By, but by acclamation, they've made it eight to six, the majority report. Right. Okay. So we're uh, on the majority order, report. Now. Technically, it's the report before us, not the majority report. Which so if you want to be semantically correct, but that's the not the motion that was made, Alderman Gutenkopf. That's not the motion that was made by Alderman Levin. That's what we're trying to clear up. By substituting, by by voting to substitute this report for the majority report, we are now voting on the motion before um, on the report before us, which is technically what we're trying to do. That's correct. Which is a majority okay, report. Thank you. Yes. That's where I think. Okay, Alderman. I think it is. I'm sorry, Clerk Spencer. All right, I'm. The, I'll call. The Levin. motion as it oh. relates to the approval motion by Alderman Levin, seconded by Alderman. Okay. Molliner. Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion before we vote? Levin. Aye. <laughs> Molliner. Aye. <coughs> Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Boyder. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Hunquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Fourteen ayes, zero nays. 14 nays, 0 nays, that motion passes. And let me look at my agenda. Uh, on to agenda item number eight, reports and recommendations of appointed and elected officials. Uh, Mayor Morley, that's me, 8.1. Um, couple of quick updates. Um, as I think everyone's aware, July 1st, uh, the merger between Edward Hospital and Elmhurst Memorial Healthcare was completed. Um, a lot of things are happening uh, as it relates to that. Um, Elmhurst Memorial Hospital here in Elmhurst actually has a new CEO and president. Uh, there is a new board of trustees uh, that supplants both boards of trustees on Edwards and, uh, and uh, Elmhurst. There's one board of trustees with 13 members on it. Um, I did have an opportunity to meet with Lou Mastro. She is the new CEO and president. Uh, that will actually have an office at uh, the Elmhurst campus. Um, she's very excited about uh, the opportunities that this larger healthcare system provides. Uh, it does offer um, a greater breadth of services than the individual hospital. Um, when I did have the opportunity to meet with uh, Ms. Mastro, um, I was um, very uh, clear to point out that um, uh, Elmhurst Memorial Healthcare means a lot to this community, and uh, there are a lot of people in Elmhurst who have close ties, um, and I, I urged her not to forget that and appreciate that. I also uh, did compliment um, the hospital on their ongoing efforts to um, interface and interact with the community, including their two neighborhood programs that they have, and I urged uh, Ms. Mastro to continue down that path. Uh, to be good citizens, good neighbors, and uh, keep uh, uh, Elmhurst informed. Um, we mentioned it last time, but uh, it merits mentioning again. Uh, the city is presenting to the park board some of the flood plan uh, mitigation plans, and that is on August 14th. Uh, at uh, that will be held at the Abbey, and then uh, also I had mentioned uh, previously about a month ago um, after I got sworn in. Uh, I took the opportunity to write letters to all elected officials who called during our flood challenges uh, and were offering any help that they could, uh, they could provide. I took them up on that by sending them a letter and requesting them to follow up. I'm happy to say that both uh, Senator Dillard and uh, Representative Belloc um, have uh, requested personal meetings and uh, they have some ideas we'll be discussing in the next two weeks. Um, that's it for my update. Uh, City Manager Grabowski. Thank you. Just one um, announcement tonight, and that is in regard to refuse collection. Um, 
Director Hughes has been talking to the folks at Allied, and in the next two weeks, they're going to become more strict in enforcing the uh, um, new receptacle um, collection. Uh, up until now, they've been emptying basically any can that people have put out there, uh, but within the next two weeks, they're going to only take the, uh, the receptacles that were provided by the city. So just a heads up to everyone as we move forward. Uh, it seems things seem to be going very well with that. Any other reports or recommendations? Alderman Mr. Wagner. Mayor, if I could just add to the city manager's comments, will there be a, an announcement in the paper, uh, obviously on the website, but uh, I would like the press to make sure we get that correct? Yes. Uh, they will be giving out stickers next week on the cans yeah. so people know that, and then the week after we'll follow the enforcement. I would ask the, the media that are in the room to uh, include that as well. Thank you. Any other announcements? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one quick one. Over the past two, three city council meetings, we've had individuals, residents coming here and speaking about park issues. Um, anything in regards to law enforcement, obviously they would come to the city and it's right to, to um, um, air those concerns at the city council meetings and our chief of police would uh, take those and, and run with them. Um, but anything on the actual park grounds, physical changes to the park district, I would like to encourage those residents to communicate with their elected representatives for the park board. Um, we are more than willing to assist where we can, but if there are physical changes on the park properties, um, it would be appropriate for those concerns to be addressed through the appropriate government body, which would be the park board. Thank you. Alderman Healy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Director Gaston for the electric aggregation update. A um, couple points, because I, I have gotten questions recently about electric ag aggregation. Uh, when we signed on to the program, there was a concern at the time by some that uh, ComEd would be lowering their energy rate, uh, which they've done, and, they, and we now know that that is a 5.5 cent per kilowatt hour. Uh, we are still below that. So in addition to the savings that we've racked up to this point, which as a community is $3.7 million, uh, those are hard dollars, that's not an estimate. Average savings per household is $288. Average savings per small business is $211. That's through 10 months. Uh, we will continue to see savings for the next year uh, as a result of aggregation. So um, one of the better programs I think we've done over the last uh, few years, and it just is a program that keeps getting better. So just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Thank you. Uh, any other reports? Seeing none, item nine, other business. Any other business? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman York with a motion. Alderman Bram with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>